Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to this tutorial for Final Cut Pro 10. And today we're going to be looking at media management and how you can make yours simpler, faster and more powerful. Now, I've been editing since before the first NLE was even invented and I'm still only 25, which is quite impressive. And I've edited everything from feature films right down to TV spots and everything else in between. And the one thing I've come to realise is that the simpler you can make your media management, the more time you've got to actually do the fun stuff, which is cutting. So I try to keep it as lean as possible. And this is why I want to show you this method. So let's jump in and see what I'm talking about. I'm showing you my events here on my second display, just so I've got a bit more room to play with. Makes it easier for you to see what I'm talking about. But obviously this will work perfectly well on your single display, if that's all you have. So what we're looking at here is the entire contents of my library. We've got projects, we've got stills, we've got sound effects, we've got voiceover, graphics, the usual stuff that you'd expect. Send some stock footage in there as well. What I want you to do is to want to come over to the library and I want you to do New Library Smart Collection or you could do Alt Command N. And we're going to call this Smart Collection Master Access. And then we're going to double click on it and we're going to open up the filter. So what I'm going to do is come over to my filter pane here and I'm going to enable all of these or pretty much all of these. Won't bother with stabilization, keywords is useful, won't bother with people, format info, date, roles is very useful. And notice that I can actually have multiple instances of this, so I can have a couple of texts if I want. But let's just stick with one of each of the main categories for now. Now, what I can now do is go to Window, Hide Libraries. And now I've got all of this browser real estate to play with as I choose. So now we can't actually see anything and that's because we've got all of our tick boxes enabled so I'm just going to turn all of those off. And with all of those off we still can't see anything. But if for example I turned on type is and selected project, I'm going to see all of my projects. But let's get a little bit more sophisticated. I've got a whole bunch of sound effects in this library, really quite a large number. And what I've done is of course I've tagged them as effects. So I'm going to come down here and turn on roles. Let's just turn off all the roles except effects. And then I also want to turn on favorites. And now I will get all of my favorited effects, which is pretty cool. If I click on the text box and type SL for slam, I'll just get all my slams. Now if I turn everything off, Supposing I wanted to see all the slams in my library, just type slam into the text field there. So lots of ways of accessing your media. Let's have a look at another couple. So media is stills. Okay, there we go. That's brought up all of the stills in my library. And I happen to know that one of them has got the word smart in it. Let's just type that into the text box. And there's the still that's got smart in its name. I've also made a keyword for my stock footage. So I'm going to come down here and turn on the keywords and that make sure that stock is enabled. So keywords include any stock. And now I've got all my stock footage. Let's turn on ratings and I'll just get my favorited stock footage shot. But let's try something else. What I want to do is I want to find the stock footage that I've used in the current project. So let's turn off ratings, make sure keywords are still turned on, and let's select used media. And now the stock footage shot that I'm using in my current project is the one selected. So that's extremely useful. If I didn't want that, I could come down and I could say, I want to see all the sound effects I've used and then those four sound effects will pop up. So this is a really, really useful feature of this method. Now I wanted to point out that really you can be as fluid as you like with this. You don't have to stick with this set of controls. You can add extra, you can take them away. If you're not interested in favorites, let's just kill favorites, you know, and if we don't want roles or whatever, 
just kill roles. It's really just a question of being fluid with this and adding whatever you want, whenever you want it. The point is that this is now going to be your always on instant access command control center for all your media. And as you see, we've accessed all this media without ever once opening up the library pane and hunting for folders and events and keyword collections and all the rest of it. We could just do it all from within this one command center and I find that really nice, especially since this is of course a rare thing within Final Cut Pro 10, a floating HUD and that's a really nice thing to be able to do because you can customize the way you work and you're not stuck with the fixed layout. Now if you're an experienced Final Cut Pro 10 user you're probably saying well why don't you just go to the library and type command F and surely that brings up a nice search window that's just the same as your smart collection window. Why are you using the smart collection window? Well let me just add some categories to this and we can do whatever we want. Let's do roles effects. Brings up all my effects. Now that's great, we could do all the same thing that we did with the smart collection. But there's a problem with this. If I close this window down and then come over here, for example, click on something else and then again do Command F, uh, we've lost it. It's gone. And that's why you need to use a smart collection because the smart collection, double click that, maintains our filter choices. And that's what makes it so perfect to use as your media control center. So you're probably saying to yourself, well, hang on, he said he was going to be talking about media organization and he hasn't done any such thing. But really what I'm trying to say is that if you were to use this method, you could go back and look at the way you organize your media and probably realize that you could get away with far less of it than you probably thought. For example, I've got a fair old bit of media and projects and so forth in this library, but I've only got one event. I d really don't need more than one event. I don't need folders, and I can probably get away with very few keyword collections. You notice I made one for stock, but it would be madness, for example, to make one for stills when I can just bring up my stills by enabling media is stills, as we saw, and similarly audio only. All my audio is instantly accessible. I don't need a keyword collection called audio or a folder or an event called audio. Because what we're really doing here is we're leveraging the power of metadata. Now, there's been an incredible amount said about metadata in Final Cut Pro 10 and how transformative it is. And yet, the crazy thing is, we're not actually using it. Instead, we've still been making folders and bins and whatever you want to call them, just like we would in any other NLE. And we really haven't been using the most powerful tool inside Final Cut Pro 10, which is the Smart Collection, which allows us to get instant access to our material in an incredible variety of ways very easily, very quickly, very powerfully, and is generally a much better way of doing it than hunting through a batch of containers. So really my contention is that containers are a thing of the past and metadata is where the future lies. Of course there are a number of ways in which we can add metadata inside Final Cut Pro 10 in order to make it useful for this method, one of which is the name of the file. So for example, if I wanted to call this project master, we could then come over here and we could type is project text master and we'll get that master project. That's kind of pretty obvious. The other way we can add metadata is with roles. We can use any of the built-in roles and we can also add roles of our own. So anything can have a role. So for example, I've actually made a role called stock footage and we could, instead of putting our stock footage into a folder, we could have assigned a role to it. And again, that would enable us to filter it. So that's a different way in which we could do it. You'll notice that there are fields here for things like camera angle where we can enter our own metadata. 
we could just insert some text in there and then we could use format camera angle. Let's just take this clip here, call it demo. And then we could use format camera angle includes demo. And that would bring up that shot because we've added the metadata inside Final Cut Pro 10. But of course, you could use the finder to embed metadata. So here, for example, I've got four files. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to tag them with today's date rather than their modified date. Obviously, we can access that modified date inside Final Cut Pro 10. But supposing we wanted to embed a different date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to File, Rename for Items. And then I'm going to find .jpg, and I'm going to replace it with 05162016.jpg. Rename. And now they're all renamed with that. And so if I were to bring them into my project, we can now use the text field and add that date 05162016. And you'll see that we've got those four JPEGs very easily accessible because we've effectively embedded that date metadata into the file name. So I'm not going to really go through all the number of different ways in which you can pre-prepare your metadata. Don't forget that tagging is, is a big one and works really nicely with Final Cut Pro 10. But there are lots of other ways. There are lots of very handy utilities that you can use to embed metadata. So really encourage you to hunt those down and think about ways of using them. So the point I would make in conclusion is that the classic method of using containers to organize your material, whether they're keyword collections or events or folders or whatever, is kind of the old school way of doing it and it works just fine. But this method is the way of the future. Metadata is ridiculously powerful and can be manipulated in so many more interesting ways Effectively, if you think about it, putting your file into a container is sort of creating virtual metadata about that file. You're saying something that you want to recall about it, but it's actually volatile. It's not traveling with the file. It's only there because you've put it in one single place. But if you can have metadata that travels with the file, you've got much more powerful ways of accessing it. That really is the takeaway. I'm not suggesting you use this method to replace any organization methods that you're currently happy with. I just encourage you to think about whether it would help you streamline the organization that you currently use. Make it simpler, make it faster, make it more powerful. So thanks very much indeed for watching. If you have any thoughts about this, I'd love to hear them in the comments. And I hope to see you again next time.